Hello there. Uh, yes, Martin Bentley here. I don't know if you introduced me as Marty, was it, or was it Martin? I couldn't hear it probably. No. I, think, I think I said Martin. Oh, Thank Marty. You. Okay, I can be American if you like. <laughs> but yeah, thanks um, for that. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to talk about this, um, the 360 degree value of connecting and verifying TV and connected, connected TV audiences. Um, it's a bit of a Scandinavian corner this afternoon. We're a Danish company, actually, although I'm British and we're going to talk mainly about the British market as we go through this. But we're a research technology company founded in um, Denmark almost 10 years ago. And we have very, very large panels, which is a <laughs> brilliant graphic there. I mean, the credentials for us in the, in the connected TV space are... <laughs> keep up. <laughs> <laughs> so this is quite a long session, so I might try and use humour anyway to keep you awake. But... Um, Yes, the credentials in the connected TV space for us is we have, we have very um, highly effective and future-proof sort of panel infrastructure. I don't think there's going to be time to sort of go into how we do it, but it's, um, it's a key part of what we do, and I'm happy to talk about it afterwards. We have very large panels. So in the UK, the panel is 360,000 individuals online. Um, and we have a full CTV and um, measurement capability across, across connected TV and also digital. Specifically in the UK, we're um, a partner for Finecast, so we, we build and service them for their Finecast report metrics, as you, most of you may know the Finecast uh, product. And then we also underpin the market standard in, in the Nordics. Specifically, I'll just touch on what, we've, or what has been achieved, and we're a big part of this in, in Denmark, so just a little bit more Scandinavian stuff. Um, and as you've seen um, from Christian's presentation, there's a lot to be said for the standard because it's, it's helped to create transparency and, and display the value for all the participants in that market very, very clearly as he presented. And that's being done through third party measurement. And um, I'm going to touch on this in a minute as well, but the, there's a clear standard in terms of what qualifies. So it's helping, in that case, really the sellers to, to value correctly the quality of the audiences and the, and the sort of environment that they bring to the equation. Um, it only took, I mean, my, my Danish colleagues said, oh, it took two years to do all the negotiations. They, that seemed like a long time in Denmark, but if we were to really get to the point where we've got a standard in the UK, I think two years would be seen as extremely quick. And then six months of testing, and then the product was launched just after the summer. And you can see there what the standards are in terms of the views um, for an ad to count. It's pretty exacting. So thinking about the UK and connected TV and measurement, I think this has been touched on a lot today. But we would say that there is a measurement gap. It's pretty clear. This is more of a global situation. But in the UK specifically, um, these are global numbers, actually. But there is a gap because the money, which is great for those with a digital offering, has followed the eyeballs if they've moved to consume content in a more digital space. But <coughs> it um, is not being kept up to pace with by the measurement. Uh, and that is a bit of an issue because value is lost. So how we see it in the UK is um, this little chart reminds, it, I was thinking about the situation in the UK and it's definitely like linear is still at the core in most people's minds. That's our clients see it like that in terms of the buy side that we work with. And obviously um, it's, it's still very, very successful um, as a medium. And then you've got these sort of layers that are building up outside of it. Um, it's not to scale as you can see, but you know, you could look at linear TV, BVOD, and then there's other uh, types of VOD, social video, and so on. I'm not going to get into the quality side of this, but there are reasons why we look at the whole thing and we think that the whole sort of digital as well as CTV should be looked at. So as it develops, this is how we see it developing. If we can fill the gap, or if, if the industry can fill the measurement gap, um, there's quite a lot of questions that will be answered. The first thing is we see it that this will be supplementary to the TAM or the TV measurement data. That is there to stay. It is a gold standard. But it's very different in terms of the way the panels work. They're relatively small compared to the panels that a digital partner like us can bring to it. The bigger the panel, the more easily you can unify the view of the reach across AV. Um, and, and the important thing about that, as we see it, is actually looking at frequency um, across the whole piece as well. There's a lot of brands obviously concerned with over, over sort of bombardment of ads. And if you can understand the frequency across everything you're doing, you're going to be able to manage that better. The other thing, um, <coughs> or a couple of other things that are important and we see changing as this goes forward, is that you're going to need a slightly different way to... Um, is that my mother? Sorry. <laughs> um, you're going to... We're not brothers, are we? Who said that? But <laughs> Sorry, it's put me right off there. But, um, you know, measuring the efficiency of addressable TV um, 
takes a slightly different panel structure because the, some, some buyers are using addressable to create reach or to find the extra reach, but some are also looking at more addressable audiences. And also, you know, as it, as it develops, we should see some of the buy, buy side or the buyers bringing their own audiences to the equation. And you need a much bigger um, and, and different panel structure to be able to actually measure more discrete or custom audiences, let's think of, say, car, car intenders. Um, that also then will pave the way to a fuller view of attribution. I mean, we've seen some really good presentations over the last day or two. I mean, the Canal Plus one yesterday was very good, where they were able to demonstrate how the addressable TV had really created a, a true lift in a, a buying kind of KPI, and that's fine. But also, I know, I think if you're a brand buying connected TV and other channels, you also want to see, you know, if you like, the credit that should be attributed to the other uh, journey, parts of the journey that the user will take to make that buying decision. So today, that's, that was looking forward a little bit, but when we look um, at what's going on today in the UK, the biggest question as a sort of research and measurement company we get asked is actually, where is the quality reach? And this is a big question because we know, this is actually a study of ours, where we look at the streaming and consumption habits um, in the UK and across the world. You can see that a lot of the consumption is taking place on ad-free um, platforms first and foremost. Now we know there's quality <coughs> reach and there's, there's you know, very good, um, if you like, ad quality, viewability, and so on within the BVOD in the UK, but we cannot, there is no unified measurement of that at the moment. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're hopeful that that will come one way or another. It's going to be good for the market. It's going to be particularly good for the broadcaster, we think, when that is something that can be seen by the buy side, but it's also good for them because the broadcaster will be able to demonstrate the value in the same way that um, Christian from TV2 made a really compelling case for that. And what we can see here in some aggregated data that we've masked, obviously, from some of the work we've been doing, when you look just at the, on the left-hand side for you, at the chart where you're just looking at reach on the impression, different types of publishers um, and also social, um, it looks pretty good. And it's quite well known that, you know, in the absence of, say, a unified view of what's going on across the BVOD and some of those bigger channels, that the social is there knocking on the door of the buyers all the time saying, use us, use us, we can create reach really, really quickly. But when you start to apply the, the kind of standard on view quartiles or um, the amount of the ad that's viewed, you can see on the other side, which is to your right, um, the reach drops off pretty quickly on some of those, if you like, may not be the same quality, but on those very big platforms that are telling you that they can drive quality reach. So it's not a bad picture if you're building incrementality, incrementality um, as a broadcaster that has a, a, still has a strong linear footprint but also is adding quality incrementality from the BVOD. Uh, on top, this is actually from uh, a Nordic market. <coughs> Excuse me. And what you can see here is like particularly for the, the lighter TV viewers, it's flipped the whole thing of linear being at the core right on its head. You're going to plan, I was just talking to one of uh, a lady who's on later from that market. They don't even think about BVOD and linear, it's just TV, um, because they've got that standard and currency that is common to both. And you can see it's adding very, very significant uh, reach to that. Now, I think just before I wrap it up, another way that we're seeing in the UK, um, the clients looking at um, the measurement that we're able to provide, is they're also looking at the quality of the audiences that are being reached across the, across the spread. So they're looking at... Um, what we call affinity buildup, it's effectively indexing. So all the old school people here will know exactly what indexing is, but it's looking at the efficiency or the composition per 100 viewers and, and which channels and which partners are best providing the audience they're after. Now this could be a broad reach audience, it could also be a custom audience, so like car intenders. And our clients are, um, are looking at increasing the effectiveness or the affinity over time because that basically for a buyer means that they're gonna be um, able to get more value for money. And if the sellers are looking at it the same way, but from the other side of it, then the sellers are gonna get more money for creating value. And my final slide is that, you know, on the eve of a sort of pretty toxic um, election that's coming up tomorrow, which I don't think anyone's mentioned, I'm gonna stand here and say, wouldn't it be nice if we all work together because it's better for everyone. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm not gonna say that. But I mean, seriously, if, you can, if we can get the audience measurement right in the UK and in other markets, and I think the, the Danish and some of the Nordic markets, 
say it can be very, very beneficial to the, um, to the broadcasters and the TV industry. The sellers can prove their value better. The buyers can optimize their value better. Um, the viewers, hopefully, should get a better, valuable, more valuable experience from the ads because they could be more relevant. And then overall, the market will grow. And that is it. Thank you for listening.